<laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a funny start, Brandon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we probably should have checked first. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're doing a live duet reading of C.K. Anderson's Blood Ritual, and Brandon Francis should be joining me any moment now. Jolene, hi. We do not have our stuff together. <laughs> so <laughs> bear with me for a second. Um, but I'm pretty sure this is going to work. Hey, Ava's here too. This is wonderful. Artemis Thorne, hello. Hi. How are you, Jolene? It's nice to see you here. <laughs> Hopefully, um, okay, CK's here. Hi. Oh, this is nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> CK, I'm really sorry I missed your live earlier. My Everything was just like went nuts. My kids had some, well, one of my kids had a bit of a a breakdown. <laughs> so, But I'm really sorry I missed it. Did it go well? I hope it did. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited too. It's fine. You know, kids, they have little breakdowns and they bounce back immediately. Derek, do it. I want to see you scream. <laughs> Sassy Lopez too. Someone was me. Tell me who it was. Tell me. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. DM me if you want. No one is allowed to be mean to CK Anderson. I'm really sorry. That I don't why? Like, why are people mean? I don't like why? What does anybody ever get out of it? I don't know. <laughs> yep. Throwing hands, not cool. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, Brandon, I'm sure we'll be here any moment and hopefully. Um, well, you can do it if you want. It wasn't my intention, but if you would like to, I am, of course, more than happy to, of course. Um, can you, CK, would you mind inviting Brandon to the to the chat if you know? JB, what's up? If you wouldn't mind. <laughs> whatever you can stay down you can hop up whatever you want to do um this is the last time I did a joint live was actually with JB right and she was teeny tiny in the corner the whole time which is why I wanted Brandon to host um but I hadn't realized he's not gone <laughs> He's not done a live before, so that's why he couldn't. Um, but I know when I do them, I get like a million requests to join. So people can obviously join my lives if they want to. Um, so there should be somewhere. Oh, actually, you know, here, I can do it. Share Brandon. There we go. Okay, here. I sent that over to him. Oh, here we go. Here he is. Brandon. <laughs> yes, you are here. That is wonderful. Okay, so we'll have you join um, if you can request to join. Yes. <laughs> Technological geniuses. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you can send a request to join, I can accept it. And then um, hopefully, I can't promise you won't be like a little picture down here because I never figured out how to, <laughs> how to make them the same size. Um, but we'll just cross that bridge when we get to it. Oh, isn't this great? What a fabulous group of people. <laughs> Woohoo! Guests. Okay, I see that. Except. Okay. okay. What? You're tiny. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. Thank, thank you. <laughs> this <laughs> should be big because you're doing all the reading. I just have, you like, saved the day. No. TV <laughs> <laughs> Wright's got to be dying over there. Oh, she, yeah, for sure. It's like. I did a live with her and she was tiny the whole time. All right. Brilliant minds. <laughs> just everyone's just going like this to me. That's the no, we cannot have it. It is unacceptable. <laughs> oh no, Brandon. Okay. There has to be a way to Oh, yes. Who did that? That's too much me. No, that's where where'd you go? I can be over here on the side. That is fine. I like Can you see me okay? Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, you're you're as big as I was, though. Uh, well, as small. That, that I gotta stop okay doing spit takes you, in this room. You, my friend, are the star of this show. So this is exactly no, as no, 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 no. We're in this together. <laughs> no, 
No, I'm so excited um, Same. that Brandon is doing this. This is amazing. I'm stoked. So I don't know if any of you have read Shadow Dance or seen any of the clips of Shadow Dance from CK, um, but this book is the origin story of her villain. And I'm, I've been like dying to read this. And so now this is perfect. And so Brandon, yes! To hear Brandon do it, it's just, this is gonna be absolutely incredible. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Brandon and I grew up like not that far from each other, which is so cool. And you That's know what else right. about? Do you know Cole Eubanks? Have you met Cole? Yeah. He's a, he's an audiobook narrator too, follow him. He's from- Yeah, Sydney, yeah, that sounds familiar. Which is crazy. So we're all like, we all grew up like not that far from each other. <laughs> He's from where? Sandy and Inez. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, yeah, literally an hour from me. Yep. Like another 805. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> solving. Yep. <laughs> Weirdest place ever. You guys should Google solving in California if you don't know what we're talking about. Just, CK would love it. Yeah. It's random. <laughs> It's like a little Danish village in the middle of nowhere. It's so random. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> C.K. Anderson wrote this awesome story called Blood Ritual, <laughs> which Brandon is narrating, and I'm just doing a few lines in it as well. Should we get C.K. up here? If she wants to. I told her she didn't have to. Oh, okay. Totally yeah. Hey, C.K., to. you have to. You have to now. <laughs> I heard your mom's in this. Come on. Get up here and share the embarrassment. Let's do this. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, there's the, there's the eyes. <laughs> All right. Promote All right, your short story. <laughs> Woohoo! Hi, can Hi. you hear me? <laughs> Mango <Yeah>. and bark. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm very cozy. I'm sorry. Just... No, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be very quiet. I'm just excited. Okay, I'm very excited. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I am too. What was that song? I was getting into the gothic rhythm on the way over here. I'm so sorry about this. Shush. <laughs> oh, that's okay. If he starts barking or something, you, there's a little mic button at the bottom you can hit to, you know, mute yourself oh, and uh, your dog. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> it adds some atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no, totally fine. Start playing some music. It's good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna shut up now. I'm just gonna let Brandon go for yeah, it. Me too. Yes, me too. All right, let's start this thing. <clears throat> okay. If you're ready, sorry, I didn't even ask. Yeah, geez, pressure's on, let's go. All right, Blood Ritual, a standalone story set in the Theodrath. Did I get that right? By the way, I was curious about that. Is it Theodrath or Theodrath? Theodrath. Theodrath, I knew it. an audio book, good. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> Standalone story set in the Theodrath sequel to Shadow Dance by C.K. Anderson. Narrated by, of course, me and Samantha Norbury. <laughs> Chapter 1. Present Day. The darkness of night sweeps its veil over the star-strewn canopy of the firmament, and frost on the grass sparkles like diamonds in the moonlight. A breeze that blows through the village swirls around the houses with dancing snowflakes in tow, bringing the aroma of fresh blood to Lysander's nose and tickling his senses. The still face of the human is beautiful, painted pale under the twinkling eyes of the sky. Sanguine fluid decorates her neck like a wet necklace. She had not resisted. Seduced by his penetrating gaze and enticing, telepathic voice, she wandered into his arms of her own accord. If there is one thing he has learnt during his time as a creature of the night, it is that humans are easily influenced. When a heart echoes with whispers of longing and loneliness, it will soak up compliments and praise like paper embraced by water. Lysander's thirst for blood has been quelled, temporarily, and he wipes his mouth with a handkerchief he pulls from a pocket. The body slides out of his arms as he lets go of it, landing softly with a muffled sound in the powder snow by his boots. He does not worry about covering her. Instead, 
he pulls his coat tighter around himself and adjusts the monocle over his right eye. The blood feast should sustain him for a couple of days, which suits him just fine. The main goal right now is to track down a certain mystic before he continues his long journey towards the Whispering Valley. There is no time to waste, and every minute stretching into the next hour is one too many. He must reach his destination before the month draws to a close and the powerful storms of winter sweep across the land. He brushes away snowflakes from the back of his neck. His long, raven-black hair, which he keeps in a ponytail, shaved at the sides and undercut at the back, often allows the whims of nature to sneak under his collar. He does not feel direct cold from the weather, but the moisture makes him uncomfortable, and he prefers to stay dry. He directs his steps towards the inn. The act of consuming a human's life through their blood warms him from within. It's seductive heat dancing beneath his skin and causing his lips to shift into a pleasant smile. The dinner was delicious, and with its exquisite flavor, a good mood settles within him. Chapter 2 Present Day the bed makes a faint creaking sound as Lysander takes a seat on the edge shortly after throwing off his coat and unbuttoning his poet's shirt. Slowly, bordering on thoughtfulness, he removes his white gloves and carefully places them on the bedside table. For a moment, his attention lingers on the ring adorning his left ring finger. His intense gaze follows its forms and sinuous curves, where the gold meets a set gem. Black as the deepest night, with a few splashes of blood red in its center. Slender fingers close around the ring, and he twists it back and forth as his jaw clenches. Thanks to the magical essence of this accessory, he can harness its dark sorcery and envelop himself in an aura that calms most people's worries and captures their trust, keeping them blissfully unaware that they are standing face to face with a beast a blood-sucking monster. Before becoming a creature of the night, he had been an individual with hopes and dreams in his heart, his identity shaped by the rest of society for being an illegitimate son. His existence had been a mistake, created by a human mother and a high elf father. Perhaps that was why he accepted his fate that night. He lost his life and humanity. He became a beast, stalking the shadows in search of blood by night and a false reflection of its former self by day, hidden below a veil of black magic. Head weighed with thoughts, Lysander glances briefly at the mirror in the room, where the absence of his own reflection causes him to avert his gaze. His former good mood shifts to gloom, rain dripping from the clouds in his mind. Slowly, he unties the ribbon around his neat ponytail and lets his long hair flow down over his shoulders and chest. He lies down with his hands clasped behind his neck, closing his eyes. Although he no longer needs to sleep, resting allows him to replenish his dark powers. Dreams are not prevalent. His rest comprises a dark haze that embraces him from the inside with soft fingers. It balances not only his mood, but his heaviest thoughts, replacing them with a pleasant emptiness. Sometimes fragments of memories dance before his eyelids, and normally he does not pay much attention to them. But tonight, they greet him again. The memories from a long time ago. Hi, stable boy. How do you keep your hair so tidy and neat when you muck? His eyelids flutter without him opening them. He can still recall the sound of her voice and her smile, which lit up her face, and the way she teased him to entice his tongue into conversation. I'm going to do a little screen record here, just so I don't <laughs> miss any of you all. Nope. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is, I love the writing. It's, it's bringing it's it out. So cool. All the emotion. In case, in case you guys have missed it, this is Lysander. Just so you can the see. The sexy him. man. 
Schmexy, excuse me. Oh God, we're canceled now. <laughs> you can get away with a lot more on a live than you Good, can yeah. on a post, I feel like. <laughs> Wait, I do Creed. have a question. Yeah, Is no, it go ahead. Helena or Helena? That's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm very Swedish when I talk. I would say Helena, or you can say Helena. Helena, okay. he Helena, no, Helena, Helena works. That's totally. Okay. That's what I thought, but I just wanted to make sure. And I was like, since we're paused. <laughs> Okay, great. Brandon, you're I, doing amazing, and the writing. I totally is... pronounced her. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> the writing, the writing. Oh, boy. Uh, I've been saying Hel Helena. I'm gonna have to that's redo fine. that in the short. Helena, <laughs> no, the character in JB Wright's book. And so uh, maybe that's why. Yeah. I was saying Hel Helena for some, but it, Helena. Yeah, Helena. <laughs> it's all okay with me. <laughs> all right, chapter okay. three. Ninety-nine years ago. Those brown eyes had mesmerized Lysander the first time their gazes had locked over a year ago, and his attention had been helplessly stuck somewhere between her long, dark lashes. He often thought of her in his lonely moments, when melancholy ravaged within, and the thought of her smiles somewhat eased the innate inner burden to which he was chained. Hi, she repeated. I asked you a question. With a lowered gaze, he continued working without answering her. He was not allowed to speak to the landowner's 20-year-old daughter. His rank in society was too low to even glance at her, and he did not wish to be punished. Why are you not talking to me? She asked, standing by the stable door with her arms crossed. She leaned forward expectantly. No words came to his lips. The young woman scrunched up her nose disapprovingly, then adjusted the sun hat on her head before tucking a strand of her hair behind one ear. I know your tongue works just fine. She continued, smiling widely. I heard you talking to Bianca the other night. Lysander stopped in his tracks, his shoulders stiff and his heart pounding violently. Bianca was a horse he took care of and the one he had the strongest connection with. He spent extra time with her and usually stayed near her box, sharing his thoughts with the creature until late in the evening, since he had no one else to talk to. His fingers tightened around the shovel, and he avoided looking at the woman as he spoke. I have no right to speak to you, miss. Mother and father will not arrive until later, she announced, completely ignoring his statement. I would like to talk for a while. The stable door creaked as Helena, Roseheart, stepped inside. The dust grains swirled in the golden daylight, playfully chasing each other. With aristocratic ease, she hung her hat on a nail on the wall and inhaled through her nostrils. Y your shoes, Lysander stammered, sinking to his knees as he began raking the straw in front of her with his gloved hands. If they get soiled, your father will know you have been here. Helena shrugged. For a moment, irritation seeped into Lysander's heart. The young woman was of noble birth, with no indication of concern. Whilst he constantly thought about how he could best manage his duties in order to keep his job and not be punished by the landowner. He flinched when Helena gently yet determinedly placed one of her feet over his hand. The shimmering jewelry around her ankle drew his wide eyes, and when she teasingly pulled up her petticoat over her leg to expose a part of it, he was almost consumed by dizziness. It took a great deal of willpower for him to divert his attention to her face instead. Look at me when I'm talking to you, she said, putting her hands to her sides before moving her foot. What is your name? He swallowed deeply as thoughts raced through his head. Surely it could not hurt if he made small talk with her when no one else was present. Lysander, he replied quietly, clearing his throat. <clears throat> Lysander Dulion. Dulion, you say? Helena tasted his surname thoughtfully with the tip of her tongue. 
She rubbed her chin with a hand clad in a pale pink velvet glove. Your mother works at the inn in town, does she not? Yes, miss. As if by pure chance, his mother had served members of the Rosehart family at the inn on a rainy evening. She had overheard them speaking about having lost one of their stable boys after Bianca had kicked him and broken his ribs. None of the other stable boys wanted anything to do with the unusually truculent horse. She had served them food and drink, and cautiously asked if they would consider hiring her son, as he had already worked as a stable boy for another family for some years. But they had left town several months ago. They had agreed to let Lysander meet Bianca the next day to see how she reacted. Yes, he remembered it like it was yesterday. He had seen right through the horse's wrathful temperament, peering into her soul and speaking to her telepathically, an ability he discovered during childhood and had kept hidden from his mother. Perhaps his good hand with horses and many other animals was due to him being a half-elf and his connection to nature. Bianca had calmed down, allowed herself to be stroked over the muzzle and scratched on the withers and this had left the Rosehart family mightily impressed. They had disregarded his socially inferior status, and thus he would work for them and sleep in the employees' quarters. I prefer if you call me by my name when we are alone. The young woman remarked, breaking him out of the chains of thought. Helena. Helena. He already knew it. The name sounded pleasant as he let it echo in his mind his discreet gaze following her when she stepped aside to settle on a hay bale. Her pink dress with a white petticoat contrasted beautifully with her wavy, brown shoulder-length hair, rosy cheeks, and red lips. He got up to his feet and walked over to Bianca's box. The horse neighed barely audibly and blew lightly on his face with her nostrils as he scratched her neck and spoke to her in a low voice. He could almost feel Helena's weighty gaze fixed against his spine, causing him to sweat with the apprehension that the landowner's gorgeous daughter was only a few steps away from him. And what might happen if he, the illegitimate child, was caught conversing with her? You are a half-elf, Helena said in a sober voice and lifted her chin in, a, in the air a little. Do you age just like a human? A discreet sigh escaped Lysander's lips, and his shoulders felt heavy. His gaze lingered on Bianca. Yes, miss, aging is just like any human. Helena. She corrected him firmly. Helena. For a moment, he held his breath and let the sound of his own tongue sink into his ears. How old are you? She continued curiously. Nineteen years old? He fell silent, and his cheeks stretched back in a grimace. Bianca nudged him lightly with her muzzle, and he glanced at the young woman over one shoulder. You should not spend time with me. The fabric of the dress rustled faintly as Helena jumped down from the hay bale and took a step in his direction. Her arms crossed over her chest. Why not? She asked, stubbornness burning in her eyes. I have been watching you for over a year, and I know you too have cast secret glances in my direction. I have never spoken to a half-elf before, and you have piqued my curiosity. Despite your curiosity, you did not know my name. He exhaled before biting his tongue. His forehead furrowed. Her name was among the first I had committed to memory. A streak of shame appeared at the corners of her eyes, and as her arms fell to her sides, the faint fragrance of her perfume wafted in the air. He took a quiet breath, looked away, and closed his eyes for a few seconds. An aroma of roses faintly edged with citrus and a pleasant mix that both tickled his nostrils and filled his heart with icy melancholy. But I know it now. 
She murmured, <laughs> excuse me. She murmured softly, tilting her head slightly. Lysander, it is a handsome name, just like your appearance. Someone who has such good hand with animals is bound to have a beautiful personality. Did I imagine her words? When he returned his attention to her, her emotions painted her cheeks in a red hue. She shot him a sweet smile before leaning towards him on tiptoe, whispering as she shyly lowered her gaze. We could meet in secret. My parents need not find out. You, you are a rose heart, Lysander stammered quietly, his mouth dry and beads of sweat covering his forehead. I am impure. You should do the right thing and stay away from someone of such inferior status. I have been curious about you for a long time, and I believe you are curious about me. It shows in your eyes sometimes. Longing, daydreams, perhaps even a hint of hope? A shout from outside made Helena nimbly pull away, and she brushed a few strands of hair behind her ears. My parents have arrived. She mumbled disappointedly, putting on her sun hat. Wait for me tonight. You want someone other than Bianca to speak with. As she hurried out of the stable, his gaze followed her steps, the dress and petticoat swirling around her legs. The traces of the perfume floating in the air crept into his lungs and caused the wistfulness in his soul to shatter at the edges with the purest form of hidden euphoria. Let's take a moment, take some oh. breaths. Oh, so <laughs> that was wonderful. That was so this, this is awesome. <laughs> So good. And CK, the writing really is beautiful. Yeah, I'm <laughs> starting to tear up. <laughs> I wrote this in five days when I had high fever, and it took me five days to write it. And I don't know what kind of illusions I was having, <laughs> what kind of fever <laughs> dreams I was having. That's, that's the result. <laughs> that's, that's perfect the for what he's feeling with the dizziness <laughs> and everything like that. Yeah. Thank you. It's gorgeous. <laughs> How much time do you have, Samantha? I'm willing uh, to keep going. Uh, well, yeah, keep going. Go, go, go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Chapter four, present day. <clears throat> Lysander tethers his horse to an old fence. With a gloved hand, he pushes open the door of an old, almost dilapidated cabin with dirty windows where thick moss has spread over its roof partially covered with snow. Dust and snowflakes swirl around each other in a wide dance, wild dance, as the warm air from within embraces him as he steps through the doorway. Oh yeah, I love this character. <clears throat> Let me just get into my old man voice. I give you so many samples of that. that <laughs> Maybe I should give them all three samples. <laughs> Wipe off your shoes. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Why, wipe off your shoes before you step on my carpet, Lysander. He hears a raspy voice say. The wind causes the cabin door to slam shut and snow icicles to fall from the roof. Lysander stomps his feet to remove as much of the snow as possible. You have my name on your tongue, he remarks, glancing towards the interior of the cabin, his vision partly blurred by the fog on the monocle. And yet we have not met previously. The heavy scent of burning candles and wood, mixed with the smells of various herbs, tickled his nose as he takes a deep breath, despite not needing to breathe. Strings hang down from the rafters, decorated with crow's feet, small and clean bones, and dried bunches of flowers, their stems spreading in different directions. He pushes a few aside with his hands as he directs his steps to a table where a figure sits, leaning over bird bones and shimmering stones of varying colors. A cowl covers the figure's face, and the hands protruding from the large puffy sleeves are sinewy, scarred, and wrinkled. 
I have been waiting for you for twenty years, Lysander Duleon. Hey, Samantha, you said, is it Duleon or Duleon? I said Duleon. Duleon, yeah, I'll stick with it. <laughs> Lysander Duleon. The raspy voice replies again. His cups... <clears throat> he cups his hands and picks up some bones, bringing them to his mouth and whispering something inaudible before letting them fall on the table with a thud. Although Lysander cannot see the man's eyes, he can sense he is being watched and that the man is also surveying the pattern the bones create across the table's surface. Then I suppose you also know what I am, as well as the purpose of my visit, Lysander says, as he runs the tip of his tongue over his sharp fangs. The old man's head moves slightly in his direction, and momentarily, Lysander can make out his green eyes glinting under the darkness of his hood. Your steps are soundless, your figure shadowless, despite your magical veil, and your hunger rooted in the night's embrace, he replies, as a hoarse chuckle finds its way into Lysander's sound-sensitive pointy ears. <laughs> uh, I remember giving you <laughs> laughing in that, and I was just losing it, just getting, just exasperated. With the, the laugh there. <laughs> just like ridiculous, just. <laughs> That's just how I laugh normally. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, no, you got me laughing fit now. Yeah. <sighs> All right. It's called Control. the live laughs. It's a thing. <laughs> Control. <laughs> your, your inner rage pierces the disguise. And the monster you hide stares back at me. Lysander stops in front of the table and grabs the back of a chair opposite the man with both hands. The mystic is said to be skilled, but his behavior borders on hidden madness. Lysander says not as he pulls out the chair with a loud scraping sound and takes a seat. His lips take on a dark smile and his head tilted to the side. I am looking for a certain item, he says, dragging his index finger across the table and looking disapprovingly at the gray dust grains on his glove. A soul shard whose blood red, polished surface holds a dark god encased within, the man murmurs, spreading the bones in front of him with his fingertips and drawing invisible patterns across the old wood. I... You seek to tame the ancient being. A cackling, nearly maniacal laugh bursts from the mystic's throat, and as he throws back his head, the hood falls to reveal a narrow, furrowed face with stubble, pale green eyes, and shoulder-length white hair that must have been thicker once upon a time. Most of those who perform the ritual walk through the gates of death he continues, a drop of spit flying out the window of his lower teeth. Oh, he's got a lisp. Most of those who perform the ritual walk through the gates of death. I, like that? No? Okay. <laughs> it's this... so good, though. The voice you're doing is so oh, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. The smile on Lysander's lips spreads with a mocking hint at the corners of his mouth. I am already dead, old man. You are not the first vampire to try to consume a soul shard. Perhaps you will be one of the few who survive the ritual. Darkness resides within you, black as the surface of the sea during a still night when not even the stars dare to show their faces. Lysander thoughtfully grasps a shimmering purple stone and examines it intensely. The color evokes memories painting the picture of Helena gently caressing his face with a red rose. Soft petals had tickled his features as he slumbered among the straw in the stable, and an excited heart had thrown his entire world off balance as he had awoken to meet her adorable smile and beautiful dimples. She wore a purple dress in the golden glow of the afternoon sun, 
When she had taken it off, the shame of his social status had been shed. Replaced by love in its purest, deepest form for the young woman with the rose perfume. Her warm fingertips had painted untold stories across his skin, and her searing kisses had left invisible marks across his mouth, neck, and collarbones. Yes, he can still remember how her lips had tasted, and how they had lost themselves in each other's arms. I need you to show me the way to the Whispering Valley, he says curtly, placing the stone back on the wooden surface. The mystic leans forward a little with his fingertips on the tabletop, while a frosty smile plays a dark melody over his lips. In your features, I can see the atrocities you committed against the two other mystics you encountered along your journey, he says, hissing with laughter. <laughs> you carry some of their carved bones in a small pouch in your pocket. They pulse with magic you have stolen from them. Their bodies mutilated. You keep them alive from a distance using the black arts you possess. The magical charge from their souls and the bone fragments triangulated my location and brought you here. Your footsteps are the first ones to enter this cabin as a guest. You are sharp and skilled for an old man. Lysander smiles softly, adjusting the monocle over his right eye. With a calculated slow movement, he reveals a dagger hidden under his coat and pulls it out of his sheath. With one of his fingers, he strokes its black blade, dark as a starless night, and stares at the man. I suggest you follow me of your own accord, or I will bend your mind to my will. It is said that such a mental intrusion hurts immensely, he says, a surprisingly gentle tone playing in his voice. The mystic chuckles hoarsely and gets up slowly. His legs are thin, his back crooked, shaped by the passing of time. His fingers close around a walking stick. Straining, he shuffles over to the vampire now standing. My body is weak, <coughs> my boy, he replies, coughing. No matter what choice I make, I will perish, either by your hands or by the disease that is ravaging me <coughs> from the inside. He puts a bony hand on Lysander's shoulder and squeezes it a little. I do not know your reasons for seeking the power of an evil god. All I know is that your lost love's spirit would be tormented if she saw what you have become. Lysander's firmly... <laughs> Give me a second. Whew. This is amazing. Was that our knowing nod? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we no, I, I'm not even looking. Like... <laughs> it's, it's the writing right there. Oh. So good. It's good. Lysander firmly removes his hand from his shoulder. A gasp accompanied by a squeal of pain escapes the human's lips as the vampire nimbly grabs his little finger and snaps it off. Good feelings gone. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut, he says in a low, menacing voice, staring with icy, twisted eyes. I suggest you do not speak to me again while we travel in each other's company, provided I do not address you first or I may lose what little patience I have and break the rest of your brittle bones. He cray-cray. He's cray-cray. <laughs> this is so cool hearing somebody else voice a character that you voiced. Like, it's really neat hearing somebody else's take on it. I'm, I'm yeah, because you've done Lysander. Yeah. And when he's really unhinged, when he's extremely unhinged. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember I'm full mental bro. Lysander. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, he's even more unhinged in Shadow Dance. You know what I'm talking about, Samantha. It's like, it's just and I, I remember, I told Brandon, I was like, yeah. uh, your version is not quite as unhinged yet. <laughs> 
Oh, it's so good though. He's like, he's I feel like it's like more powerful this one though. Like he's, cause he's still his own mind in this, isn't he? Yeah, he does. He, he still has his mind. It's uh, later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll keep going. <clears throat> All right, go for it. Chapter five, present day. The old man pants weakly with exertion as he slowly wades through the cold water of the cave. Glistening beads of sweat decorate his furrowed forehead. Excuse me, just one second here. Drink break. <laughs> Watch me having not muted that. That was a very large burp. <laughs> 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 he occasionally stops to take ragged breaths before continuing forward. The sound of the walking stick hitting the ground with each step bounces off the walls and ceiling, accompanied by the irregular sound of water dripping. Lysander lets his eyes wander over the place, while his black magic keeps him floating above the surface of the water. The tainted magical essence in the atmosphere manifests as luminous orbs casting a green light around them. Out of the corner of his eye, he sees shadows extending long, sharp claws in his direction. But as if merely figments of his imagination, they vanish when he glances their way. The other man breathes laboriously as he steps out of the shallow water and climbs a series of weathered steps. His robe is wet and clings to his ankles, causing him to stumble just as he reaches the top of the stairs. The air leaves his lungs as he hits the ground and drops the walking stick with a loud thud. Lysander lands softly some distance away, his eyes clouded with a disapproving expression. The man winces in pain as he attempts to stand up and accidentally touches his broken finger. Lysander gives the staff a light kick with one foot in his direction. Make haste, he urges impatiently. Turning around, his eyes narrow as he adjusts the monocle over the bridge of his nose, taking slow, deliberate steps with his arms extended in pure delight. He approaches a throne built of skeletons and human skulls. A ceramic bowl sits on a pillar next to it. Above the throne, an object hovers in the air, sparkling blood-red blood -red fragments pulsating around it. Finally. I have found it. Behind the throne rests an enormous slab of stone with various symbols and illustrations carved into its surface, including an upside-down eye in the center with a crescent moon above. <clears throat> Villagers in the nearby areas have disappeared for over a thousand years. The old man breathes laboredly as he catches up to Lysander and stops next to him. The old stories say the soul shard has been here since time immemorial, and whispers of its dark god burrowed into their minds. Those who were enslaved took it upon themselves to build this temple until their bodies and minds could no longer bear it. He nods at the skeletons and skulls, and a hissing laugh leaves his chapped lips. <laughs> Some of them got to adorn the throne, the others, forgotten and buried by the hands of time. The glow of the soul shard reflects in Lysander's red eyes and monocle, his mouth half open as he gazes at it intently. His chest seems to vibrate from within, and his still heart fills with a darkness that both torments and pleases him. My child from the night. You are not like the other unworthy beings who met their death at my throne. The telepathic voice invades his mind, causing his lips to curl into a wide smile. The mystic, it continues to whisper. Death taps his shoulder and breathes on his neck. Sacrifice his blood for me. Mercy has no place in your still heart. The old man's raspy voice reaches him. You do not need to do this, boy. Your actions testify that people have done the same atrocities to you, which you do to others. But it is not too late for you. 
You may be consumed by darkness, but if you find your lost love's pure energy again, she can heal your wounds. Do not use black magic to find her. Instead, use your longing. Whew. Memories flashed before Lysander. Helena's face was contorted with despair. Her eyes filled with desperate tears as her enraged father had severely beaten him. His vision was hazy, from shock and the torrent of his blood flowing down his face. The silver ring that had fallen from his palm during the beating. The ring for which he had saved his meager salary. He had become smitten, consumed with the glow of his burning heart and tantalizing dreams of a life together with the woman carrying the fragrance of roses. And then came the flood of memories of him traveling from village to village, driven by the black magic he had immense immersed himself in and by a broken heart that gave the roots of hatred a stronghold in his heart. <clears throat> Excuse me, stronghold in his soul. If he had been a high elf, he would have had to feed on magic daily. But he was a half elf, able to store magic without it depleting when not in use. Instead, he had learned to drain life from living beings and to make the dead rise and obey him. By constantly being on the move, he had absorbed more knowledge in black arts and escaped any consequences. Lysander nimbly turns his head towards the mystic. Traces of fatigue, pain, and pity deep in the furrows of the man's face. Catrin de Leon had had the same tired, de dejected look hiding behind her eyes when her illegitimate son had staggered through the cottage door with a heart in a thousand pieces, beaten to a pulp by Henry Roseheart. A flaring anger masks the shame in Lysander's body. He grabs the man's hair and drags him to the ceramic bowl. The mystic breathes laboredly, but no words leave his lips. The god's telepathic voice settles like a cacophonous blanket over the mind of the vampire. Using his free hand, he pulls out his black dagger. He pushes the man's head and neck down against the edge of the bowl. The mystic gives him a pitying look before a wheezing laugh finds its way out of his throat. With a single, lightning-quick movement, Lysander slices his throat open from one side to the other, making sure the blade carves through the cart. The <laughs> uh. That gets me every single time. Same, because it's spelled carotid. It sounds so weird. <laughs> <laughs> the corroded artery. Sanguine liquid fills the bowl and runs down the side of it. Lysander's lips curl into a smile, and he laughs in wicked delight as an immense creature towers before him. He lets go of the man who is reeling in the final stages of life and uses black magic to fling him away into a rock face. Accept my gift to you, he exclaims in euphoria as he turns to the monstrous creature and stretches out his hands towards it. The dark giant god has a half-human body, surrounded by a large number of tentacles, each with sharp claws on the ends. It has no head. Instead, the neck splits in half, and out pours black, swirling matter resembling a thick, magical mist adorned with wild eyes. The lower part of the body resembles that of a snake and sharp spines protrude from the side of the tail's tip. I am worthy of your power, Lysander continues with heat in his voice. <laughs> Let me revel in your soul, and together we shall bend the world to our liking. The soul shard in the air is lowered while the vision of the god disappears as quickly as it appeared. Lysander stares at the shard, cupping his hands as it hovers before him. His head is pulled back with such strength that his neck almost snaps, his mouth opened wide by an invisible force. It pushes the object down his throat and pulls it into his stomach. Excruciating pain explodes inside him. A gasping sound escapes Lysander's lips as he sinks to his knees with his hands on his stomach a myriad of images flashing before his eyes. 
his insides wrestle with something monstrous. Lysander Dulion, heed my words and I will share my power with you. Everything you desire shall be yours. The dark god's essence spreads from the shard in Lysander's stomach to his fingertips and toes. Euphoria replaces the melancholy in the innermost corners of his mind for a moment. And suddenly, it dawns on him. He no longer remembers the scent of Helena's perfume. The elation quickly blends into bitter despair. No, I do not want to forget. I do not. The invisible force violently knocks him to the ground, and something heavy rests over his body, pressing him down and forcing him to submit. Just give me one second. <laughs> Woo! CK, you can hurt us, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm also a mess. <laughs> Glad we're all in this together. Oh. Obey me, and I will give you everything you want. Disobey, and I will be the stake that pierces your heart. I wish to find her energy. I seek to revive her and experience a future with her, where no one raises a hand against me again. Everyone must bow before me. The words are drawn out from between his lips, as if by force. The weight from his body lifts, an echoing voice inside his head. Your body is now my vessel. Our reign is about to begin. When Lysander gets back on his feet, silence abruptly replaces the echoes. Unwittingly, he finds himself drawn towards the ceramic bowl. As he stares into the blood, an image of a young woman appears in an environment unlike any other. For a moment, a sharp pain stabs his still heart, and he catches his breath. My eyes are mistaken. It is not her. This woman has longer hair, wears thick-rimmed glasses, and dresses differently. She speaks a tongue he has never heard, yet he understands the meaning. <laughs> Helena used to always wear a smile on her face. Unlike this stranger, who looks distrustful, sad, a tormented soul. The dark god's voice once again echoes inside his skull, whispering. The light flows in her blood, a magic that is deadly to your kind. But if you learn to master it, you will strike fear into the hearts of all. She is not born yet. And when she is, she will take her first breath in a world far from ours. You must capture her attention through a connection, a bridge between the two dimensions. Immerse yourself in my black art, for she is the key to finding the one you seek. The image of the woman blurs, and Lysander takes a step back as the voice in his head fades away. One hand finds its way down to his stomach, and when he touches it, he feels the shape of the soul shard protruding under her skin. The blood ritual has successfully merged them. He turns around and adjusts his white gloves, now stained dark red, now stained with dark red blood. Can't even see. My eyes are watering still so much. There is, there is much to do. He plans to forge and new, and new dark abilities to learn. The thought of pulling Helena into his embrace intoxicates him, and he smiles softly to himself as he shuts his eyes. This time, finally, he will put a ring on her finger. Wow. 
Wow. Brandon. Wow. Like <laughs> CK. I don't know what. Wow. <laughs> You both, wow, like I'm a mess. Look at me. <laughs> I'm a mess on the internet. <laughs> oh, Same. You, wow. Just a... you two are amazing. Like, I, I am so, so lucky that I connected with you two, and I'm sitting and crying now, and I'm going to cry for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Uh, we are the lucky ones. And your writing is so beautiful. It's the story you tell is beautiful, but the way in which you tell it is uniquely beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> it really is. You can't even talk anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, those descriptors, like, it. I am a uh, dam of emotions <laughs> usually held in. And then if you get me to that breaking point, it's just, it's gone. I'm gone. I'm fled. You kept cracking it with with each descriptor in this whole thing uh yeah, i didn't think i would actually ever feel bad for lysander like yeah and, and yet i'm now team lysander how did you even make that happen? <laughs> you know, this is what i do to people apparently first they they truly hate him and then He's i ask them to peace with peace. <laughs> and then they understand then they understand <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just confused. <laughs> yes, uh, and me too. <laughs> How Especially am I supposed to go on with my life now? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, this was intense, you guys. Um, yeah, I I am very humbled right now. Um, words, words. Uh, can I speak? <laughs> I don't even know. Can I set, put sentences together? Because it feels like I can't. Um, you two are incredible. Um, yeah, you did amazing, Samantha. Ah, you two, able I mean, to play was... off you just like, mm. what? Yeah, that was <laughs> amazing. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I'm so stoked, so excited for the Witch's Brew with you two. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am too. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I need to write faster because I want to see this happen. <laughs> yes. I can't wait to play Daniel. Yeah. Whoa, who is Daniel? And is he Southern? Esmeralda. Yeah. 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 I don't know I anything about that. this brew yet, so I'm <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, it's it's gonna gonna Southern accent too, or just Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is, it's going to be like, um, I think you came up with a nice mix of like Southern and Western accent for Daniel, which is perfect because this is set in a village and get this, Garen makes an appearance in this story. Ah! <laughs> yeah, Jolene's already starting to say that. Garen who? <laughs> no, Garen is still our man. He is still our man. He, it's yes, still Garen. Yes, 100%. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> I feel oh. bad for Lysander, but it's still Garen. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I mean, there, there is no redemption arc for Lysander uh, at this point. There is no way he can but get redeemed. He's supposed to bring her back and they live happily ever after. That's the what whole, happens, this right? Is what I mean. And nobody gets hurt in the process, right? <laughs> yes. So basically, everything that happens in Shadow Dance is not going according to plan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to, yeah, when I get into this. And then I also have the audiobook, Samantha. Yeah. Do will... you? Oh, God. Yes. <gasps> Can't wait to hear the voice. Okay. All the voices. Oh, yes. so, so <laughs> and and find out what happens to this guy. <laughs> I do like Lysander quite flamboyant, to be honest. Like, because he's just real, because he says, what does he call Saga all the time? Deary. Yeah. So, like, very, <laughs> yes. like, so I read him like a very dancey, flowy, like flamboyant kind of way. Like Mrs. Doubtfire. That's if I hear Deary, I just Deary is like, like total not Scottish. Right. <laughs> like Robert sure. Williams Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> Which for the longest time is what I thought a Scottish accent sounded like. I'm just from Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> <laughs> my entire opinion of the world. <laughs> oh. Yes, I'm Elise. Just... I I do look like Roy Kent. Apparently, thank you. <laughs> Can you top off my rosé, please, Janice? Yes. There you go. I won't say it, but yes. Kaylee. You do look like content. I put a whole video out on that. Just, someone was like, you look like it. I'm like, oh, I'll do a reaction. 
You do. Oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to undo that now. <laughs> oh no, that made it worse. He also has short hair. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Elise is my mom, just so you know. So she was probably freaking out. Oh. Like, oh, that's my Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Both your moms are in here? Yeah, my mom is in here too. I oh, that's great. Hey, mom. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's, I told Brandon before, I was like, she's Lysander's number one fan. Just, just, you right. know, just yeah. saying. No pressure. <laughs> the pressure all. is on. Oh, but did your, your daughter's proud. <laughs> <laughs> she's very protective of Lysander, let me tell you. Yeah. Everything has to be on point. <laughs> well, see, now I understand that more having read this. Gosh, this is amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so, so no, much. No, you two are amazing. See, there's my mom. Hi, Sheila. Hi. <laughs> Sheila, hi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this was your, this was amazing. <laughs> yeah. This was your first live, Samantha, right? My first, no. No, I, I go live quite a lot, but it's my first duet. Oh, do, yeah, that's what yeah. I meant. Of course, because you're hosting and you're allowed to pull me up, which I wasn't. Thank you for recovering that, no, by the way. That cool. was, I'm sorry. I was like, you like, oh, no. more followers than me. Like, no. eating like three quarters of it. Like, well, yeah, I know what I'm doing. No, it's a facade. <laughs> it's, I didn't even know there was requirements. I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't either, yeah. No, uh, but thank you, CK. This was awesome. Uh, no, thank you to both so, of you. I'm so yeah. emotional. I, like, I, I'm sorry. I'm like, like, I'm just dripping with emotion. <laughs> I'm just like, Same. oh my gosh, shush. <laughs> I'm well, we sorry. all are because your words and your performance has us all like, <laughs> but in a good way. I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm be. I'm so sorry about the. She just she ruins everything for me, this dog. But yeah, thank you. Like, um, I feel like you guys bring my words to life. I feel like. Did I write this? Uh, it doesn't feel like it. Aww. It kind of does not feel like it. Oh, I'm honored. <laughs> Truly. I can't wait to work with you both for the Witches Brew. I am so excited. Yay. And uh, oh, uh, for the Witches Brew, Brandon, I'm going to have to ask you to voice Garen. This is a big responsibility. Ooh. There are a lot of people who have the hearts for Garen. Shush. Jolene. <clears throat> <laughs> Jolene. Jolene is like number one, I think. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So yeah, there, there's a huge responsibility there. So in the Understood. next few days, in the yeah, next the few days, um, voice for it. yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to um, say, well, Samantha did it like this. <laughs> Sam did it like this. So you do your version. That's so, right. Yeah. That's in the right. next few days, um, no, no rush. Just gonna message you about that because I'm excited. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, you didn't give him a uh, Scottish accent, did you? Same accent. Oh no. Good. Oh no. <laughs> no. The only Scottish accent in Shadow Dance went to the dwarves, and I didn't do like a real Scottish accent. I did like a Lord of the yeah. Rings Scottish yes. accent. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. I loved it. Okay. It was like so a, good. Um, a World of Warcraft Scottish yes. accent. Did yes. you play? I know CK has played that. I played it definitely. Oh. Just growing up. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, know a lot. I played a lot of World of Warcraft. I played <gasps> Wars. We got a like, bunch of WoW nerds this right is here. Like, this, is why we get this is like, why man parties. Like, <laughs> yes. I was not a geeky nerd girl, like, in a cool way. <laughs> I was like a geeky nerd girl in a real way. <laughs> Same here. Same here. Oh, my goodness. This is awesome. <laughs> Yeah. This is great. This is see. This is why I get along with you two. I knew there yeah. was something deep yeah. connecting us. It's the love for World of Warcraft. One hundred percent. Yeah. I'm about to break exactly. that though. Alliance yeah. or horde, Samantha? Uh, alliance. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I'm out. Me and Brandon are on the horde side. <laughs> I am such. I'm such a, a good girl. Like all the way through. Like I will always play a good team. Always. <laughs> Excuse me, Thrall is a good guy, okay? Yeah, so, he is my orc best. king. Okay, yes, hundred percent. Okay, this is just between us and chat. I had a crush on Thrall. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I. It started early for me, you guys. You must yeah, have read home. Lord of the Clans <laughs> by Christy Golden. Yeah, <laughs> that was my that was my entry into fantasy. Honestly, it was oh, it was fantastic. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> 
All right, uh, you guys, I have to go, but this has been remarkable. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. Yeah, for... thank you to both of you. You are literally wouldn't crazy. have been possible without you, Samantha. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> well, ditto. <so. laughs> this was really fantastic. And it was nice to get to like chat with you guys face to face. Like, yes. Yeah, you too. If only it was yeah. in real life too, but this is better than nothing. <laughs> we'll make it happen someday. For sure. Yes. You enjoy your like lovely California weather. We'll be here stuck in the yeah, cold. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, we'll just be here in the rain. I'm so spoiled. So spoiled. Right. Jordan, thank you so much for being here. And Ashley, thank you too. And Ava and like everybody Everyone. who was here. And yeah. Like 8.5 thousand likes. That is remarkable. That's and insane. I feel like Brandon earned everything. Oh, that's amazing. One, which is just great. So thank you. Ah, oh, group ever, group ever. So much. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, evening, whatever it is. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye.